When ape divers pushed their limits in a famous South Australian sinkhole, tragedy would soon strike. Although four of them would make it out alive, the remaining four would run short of oxygen and become lost in the depths of the cave. Lasting almost an entire year, the recovery operation was one of the most challenging of its kind. This is the story of the Mount Gambier cave diving disaster. Located under a South Australian cattle farm roughly 5 hours drive from Adelaide is a flooded sinkhole known as the Shaft. Accessed through a small hole in the ground, the main chamber below spans 460 feet from one end to the other. From the base of the main chamber is two tunnels, one reaching a depth of 260 feet while the other 407 feet. The cave was found in the late 1930s when a farmer's horse stumbled in the hole. It wasn't until the mid-1960s that divers first entered and its true size and scale was uncovered. On the 26th of May 1973, a group of eight divers arrived at Mount Gambier in South Australia with the intention of cave diving at the shaft. The group consisted of John Bockerman, Peter Burr, family members Christine, Glenn and Stephen Millett, plus Larry Reynolds, Gordon Roberts and Robert Smith. On the following day, the group lowered a shot line to a depth of 150 feet or 46 meters before completing a successful dive. On the 28th of May, two days following their arrival, the group again dove to the rock pile at the base of the main chamber. Later reports by survivors indicated no prior plans to explore beyond the rock pile, normally regarded as the safe point for recreational diving. While the initial dive went smoothly, upon exploring the rock pile, Robert Smith began to feel the effects of nitrogen narcosis. He indicated to the group he would return to the main chamber. However, to Smith's surprise, the group signalled their intention to explore deeper beyond the ledge, something they had not planned for. After around 10 minutes alone in the main chamber, Smith saw Glenn Millett returning from the deep and together they returned to the surface. When they arrived at the surface, Larry Reynolds had already returned and with almost no air left in his tank, Peter Burr surfaced shortly after. Aware the others would be low on oxygen, Glenn Millett donned a spare tank and descended to where the main chamber met the Northwest Tunnel. There he found the torch of Stephen Millett, but no sign of the four remaining divers. Substantial amounts of silt had been disturbed and the visibility had been reduced to almost nothing. It was now heartbreakingly obvious the others were lost. Knowing there was no chance they could still be alive, he had no choice but to decompress and return to the surface, leaving John Bockerman, Gordon Roberts and his two relatives Stephen and Christine Millett to spend much of the following year lost in the depths of the cave. During a police interview, Larry Reynolds stated that moments before making his exit, he had seen both Christine Millett and Gordon Roberts attempt to escape. However, Instead of ascending the slope from which they had come, they swam into a dead end in the roof, which had no exit. Further down the cave and at about the same time, one surviving diver said they witnessed John Bockerman frantically swimming in the wrong direction. On May the 29th, the day following the accident, the police underwater recovery squad searched the cave to a depth of 200 feet or 61 meters. However, the search was brief and no bodies were found. There was a second attempt the following day, however, this was again unsuccessful. By this point, it was clear to police that the recovery operation would be difficult and more training would be required. And for the next eight months, no further recovery attempts were made while police divers received specialised training from the Royal Australian Navy. On the 22nd of January 1974, the next phase of the recovery commenced when a documentary film crew were permitted to enter the cave. 
Diving to around 50 feet or 15 meters using professional lighting equipment, they illuminated the cave like daylight. Upon entering the first part of the northwest tunnel, a technician looking back at his two teammates noticed a third person behind them. Realizing it was a body in a wetsuit, the team immediately turned the light away before surfacing to report their findings. On the following day, police entered the cave where, with the directions from the film crew, located the body of Stephen Millett under the sloped cavern roof where the northwest tunnel meets the main chamber. Police immediately got to work to retrieve the body, and on that same day, after almost eight months since the tragedy, the body of Stephen Millett was the first to be towed from the dark depths of the cave. Although the police divers would re-enter the cave to conduct another search, no further discoveries were made that day. On the 9th of March 1974, a recovery team again entered the cave, this time however with much improved equipment. Diving at a depth of 185 feet or 56 meters, the team located the bodies of Christine Millett and Gordon Roberts just 20 feet apart. And another 30 feet further down the tunnel, the body of John Bockerman was also found. On the 11th of March, two days after first being found, divers recovered the bodies of Christine Millett and Gordon Roberts. John Bockerman, however, too far down the cave, would remain alone for one more month. Several attempts were made to retrieve the final body over the next few weeks. Due to the increased depth, however, the issue of nitrogen narcosis was a huge factor and each attempt ended in failure. On the 7th of April 1974, divers entered the cave to locate and prepare the body for removal. And on the 9th of April, 11 months and 11 days since the disaster, the body of John Bockerman was finally removed from the cave. <laughs>